Hey everybody, Joy here. We're going to start a new snippet video from a Snippetville, Oklahoma. Um, I made my first top for Judy Kessinger's ABC Challenge. Now here's the thing you need to know. Every letter is a separate challenge. Every letter gets two weeks to make it. You can't get easier than a front and a back. This is the Alicia. There was A's. Remember, there was Alicia, Anna, and Amanda. Amanda's a jacket. And I'd like to try the jacket, but I would never wear it. I just never, ever wear jackets. I wear hoodies <laughs> and sweaters and um, cape kind of stuff. I just I just never wear jackets. Too fancy for me. I'm just too, too much of a country clodhopper type girl. So... <laughs> I'm just not into jackets. I guess I could make a real casual one. You know, put wheat shards on it or chickens or goats. Or, I don't need chickens or goats, but that's country. What else is country? My granny was country and my grandpa was country and my daddy grew up country. My mother grew up complete opposite. She grew up in Boston in a great big house with well-to-do <coughs> grandparents. She lived near the ocean. So, let me see. If I was to make a jacket, hmm, I wonder if you get extra points if you make more than one entry in the A department. I have no business making anything in any of the departments. I'm supposed to be getting ready to go on a trip in our RV, right? Yes, Joy, try to stay focused. I just can't resist an easy challenge, and I like Judy so much, and I like Fit Nice so much. So, what do you think? What do you think of my Valentine top? I think it is super cute. And not only that, Jerry and I were married February 1, 1975. So it can be my anniversary top, it can be my Valentine top. And you know where he took me? We got married February 1. And I think it was for Valentine's Day. I think it was. He took me to see. You won't believe who he took me to see. There was a place in Oklahoma City. It's on a street called Lincoln. And I doubt it's there anymore. It was way, way back when. And it's something I never, ever, ever did. But they had, like, famous people come there. And it was like a dinner famous people show. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, I'm a country girl. I don't know this stuff. <laughs> but it was real fancy. And we went there, and we sat at a table, and they brought our dinner to us. And I guess everybody eats the same thing. You know, it, the dinner's kind of part of the deal. And so then when dinner was done, guess who? She was old as Methuselah. <laughs> but she was still real pretty. And she could dance. She could dance. Do you know who it was? You remember Fred Astaire? Oh my goodness, could that man dance? He was homely, wasn't he? But oh, who cared? He could dance. I always said, give me a man who can sing and who can dance. And I will be a happy girl. <laughs> but Elvis was already had Priscilla. Hmm, Fred Astaire was too old. <laughs> so I'd settle for Jerry. <laughs> Jerry's a good dancer, <laughs> and he probably could sing if he just would, but he won't open his mouth when we're doing church on Sunday, and we'd always do the whole live service of church. Look at me, how many of me there are. <laughs> so we always do the whole service, you know, singing and everything, and so Jerry will be in the chair, and I'll be in the other chair, and I'll be singing, you know, the top of my lungs, and Jerry's like, Jesus loves me. And I'm over here. Jesus loves me. <laughs> and I'll go, why did you sing? Why did you sing? Oh, I'm singing, Joy. <laughs> Isn't marriage a total complete blast? <laughs> oh, I said, you got to sing in your car. When I'm not with you and you're in your truck, you got to sing in your truck. You got to sing when you're by yourself. And then you won't feel like you don't know how because you'll have all that practice, right? <laughs> okay. I love my Alicia top. I don't know if you like
like it or if you think it's goofy, but I love it. Love it. And you know what pattern it is? Is it the one I did my lounge gown with? I think it is. I think it's the one I just made that lounge gown out of. Dolman sleeve. Oh my goodness. I hope y'all will start trying to make these tops. You, ha you can't have too many. And look at how different it looks. Even though I have 50 of the tops that I've made, none of them look alike. Some of them you can look at them and say, oh, that's that same pattern. That's that, that's that Kim top she wears all the time. I probably made that six or seven times. I made the Joy top six or seven times. <laughs> but the... You choose different fabrics, and you choose different trims or different ways of cutting it up, putting it back together. Sewing is fun. It's so much fun. You just must do it. You just must do it. Now, see, I didn't have to do darts in this one because I took it in on the sides. Remember in my last video two times ago, I think it was, I said instead of putting the darts in the front of that top, the next one I would remove the sides. Well, that's what I did. So, see? Now it's not, you know, way out here and super full. Wherever I got this fabric, this is not the best quality fabric in the world, but this one is. This one's from Peggy Sagers, and it's, oh, it's just a wonderful, soft, very high quality knit. This one's just El Cheapo Beepo, which is why it was probably on sale. <laughs> but if I don't point it out to everybody, I guess nobody will know. All right, I have really got to get busy. Look, at everything is just everywhere. And I have got to get organized. We're, our schedule is very up in the air. Um, we're going around and around with that place down there. Jerry just found out that the girl lied to us, told us she did something, and she didn't even do it at all. And Jerry emailed her and her boss. And I'm hoping that somebody figures out that they need to get either this person trained or they need to get this person replaced. I know how it is these days to own a business. I know how hard it is to get help. I can imagine that it's better to have bad help than no help at all. I know when we owned our business, it took years to learn our business. We were in the medical equipment business and we got paid by Medicare and Medicaid and insurance companies and you had to fill out forms from here to yonder. And here, fill out this form and you can have a cane. And so you fill out the form to get the cane and you think, oh yay, let's sell canes. And so you start selling canes, you get a letter, guess what, we don't cover canes anymore. We had one for kids on nebulizers and we figured out how to fill out all the forms for the nebulizers. All right, everybody get a nebulizer. They write a letter, we're not going to pay for nebulizers anymore. So I, I can just imagine in the RV business, it's just as big a pain learning how to fill out all the forms, how to make everybody happy, how to do all the things. But the thing is, if you keep getting new employees all the time, sorry about that, afternoon lipsticks peeling off. If you keep getting new employees all the time, like the restaurants you go to, every time you go there, the people are new. And if everybody's always new, nobody's ever properly trained. We had people that worked for us for 10, 12, 15, 16 years. We had this adorable little girl. Everybody's a little girl when you're in your 70s, okay? Little girl, her name was Cody. And she had long, long, blonde, curly hair. Just wavy, not real curly, just wavy. Beautiful, thick, gorgeous hair. Almost red, but I think mostly blonde. And she was just a little girl. And she just had a baby. And um, she had only had one job working at a hardware store. And she took a job for us to clean the store. To clean it. And she would come in. And we only needed somebody like one day a week. And I think maybe she came two half days a week on her schedule or something. But everybody adored her. And she got to know everybody. She was very nice to everybody. And she would go to every other employee and say, is there anything I can do for you? Is there anything I can do for you? Is there anything I can do for you? She's the one that ended up working for us for 16 years or more. She was the absolute best customer service person in the whole wide world. Fabulous. She's the one I talk about that used to go out 
to the driveway, to the parking lot, and get people out of their car. She knew their names, she knew their kids' names, she knew their husbands' names, and she would walk them into the store. Everybody adored her. So I'm just saying, time. She started out cleaning. She didn't even know how to type. She started out cleaning. And little by little by little by little, she became an absolutely amazing employee. She knew every single thing we sold in that store from a Band-Aid to an electric wheelchair. She knew the CPAPs. She knew the kids' nebulizers and the, the machines, you know, like when they need light when they're newborn babies. And she knew way more than I did. Just amazing. So my point is, it takes time to get an employee that knows what the heck they're doing. <laughs> and it also takes somebody above that employee to properly train them. So if there's not somebody there to show her how to do the job because they all quit for some reason, probably back in COVID, it, it's just, you know, Jerry and I end up making the phone calls. Jerry and I end up getting things done and then calling her and telling her who we talked to and what they said. So anyway, a lot of that going on right now. <laughs> Us doing her job. <laughs> okay. All right, this is my snippet. This is Friday. Did I tell you? Friday the 13th, January, and I'm uh, going to be here tomorrow, and then the next day we are heading out to our favorite, not really, RV fix-it place. <laughs> okay, it's Saturday, we just had lunch, and I've only got time to do this one little last snippet for you, so I had something going through my head all morning. You get these goofy things in your head. I have no idea where it came from. But I thought we could play a game. What movie is that from? <laughs> Did I watch the movie? No. Have I seen the movie? Yes, but 15 years ago. And <laughs> for some reason, it's just in my head. Okay, so who said in what movie? How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> How do you do? Huh? Does that remind you of anything? Let me see what else can I say that was in that movie. Oh, I can't. I can't. I'll give the movie away. Let me see. Oh, I could say, I wash my bakes and ounce before I come. I did. How about this one? Just Get me to the church on time. Three things, same movie. I know I don't sound right, but I don't know how to talk that kind of language. <laughs> so guess what I just got from Mr. Ups? My book. So now I can actually show you the proper book that the first Wednesday of every month in 2023 is going to be used for the edit of sitar, so along. It's this book, and it's paperback. Somebody said they could only get it paperback. They're sold out everywhere, but I think she said they still have it on Amazon. But they're all—all all her books are paperback. So she's going to pick twelve blocks from this book, and if it's like the last sampler she did from her other blue book. The blocks will be a little bit different. Maybe she'll make two or three blocks. She even said five from one quilt, one from another quilt, but then change it up a little bit. Like in her first sampler quilt, she did the sleigh, but the original sleigh and the original quilt didn't have any birds. So she added some birds in the sampler quilt. Okay, so here's her book. Woo, look at that pretty quilt. Ah ha ha. See, I don't see how we could use the stripes, but maybe. We could certainly use these blocks and the trees. Got to have trees. So, I don't know what all. Look here at this cute pillow. So, it's this quilt. I don't know which house. Let me see if I can pick the house. It's this house. So, it's this house and it's this branch with these birds. And it's just a pillow. Oh, and then she's got one more house that has one window. It's this one way down here. And one snowflake. 
and what a cute pillow. So if I wasn't going down to RBC, I've got tears. It's allergies. I'm not sick. I promise I'm not sick. Um, I always have to tell everybody, it's not COVID, it's allergies. So this is Judy's last book, Top It Off. And so, I want you to see down there at the bottom, it shows all the different tops. And of course, she names them all. I was going to see if she had a list of the names in this book. Hold on. Oh, yeah, yeah, she does. It shows all of the names of the tops that are in this book. And so then she has her first book, and it has a whole bunch of tops in it. So, I am interested in knowing what the bee names are. Have you gotten your quilter's hand cream yet? You can find this in my Amazon store under sewing supplies, quilting supplies. You got to get it. It's wonderful. It really lasts. You can really tell that it's soaked into your skin and you can feel it for hours later. I bought um, three of them. So I just really, really love it. ABC Challenge. This is her book number three. Book number one was, so I go to find <laughs> Judy's first book and I find Edna's first book. <laughs> so here's the two blue books. Here they are. This book was used for her first sampler quilt. I think it was 2018. And this is the one she's using now. So, I am not going to lose you again. <laughs> so here's book number one. There is an index on all the chapters, but the blouses don't really have that many girl names. There's an Audrey, a Bobby, a bias top, a crossover, a dolman sleeve, an elastic thread, little black, Levi's coat, Susie, Duchess. So this book has a whole bunch also, but they're not really in alphabetical order or anything. You know, I think somebody made up an index of her blouses. Let's look in, let's look in this book just for fun since they are alphabetical. Let's see if there's a J. All right, there's a Jackie O and a Jessica, and a Josephine, but she didn't put the joy top in here. I don't understand that. <laughs> Why well, she did, you know the joy top's the cheapest one there too. It's only $3. <laughs> so you might wanna grab you that pattern for the joy top. The reason she made it was, I told her I wanted to top with a square neck. And so she just whipped that one up in like five minutes and called it the joy top. <laughs> Alrighty, hold on. I'm going to see if I can find that index real quick. Then I have something to tell you. Alright, don't tell me I'm not organized. I found all the tops. Somebody made this index and they actually took a picture of all of them. And so they might be by different books. But here's Audrey, Best Dressed, Bias, Bobby, Braided, and then the C's. California, Cali, Coco, Crossover, and so, if you ask Judy, email her or go to her website and see if you can ask her. There's a Laura, there's a Levine's, a little black, Maggie, Marie, Mary, Mara, lots of M's to pick from. And so then, this would be from her next book, evidently. And so on here, there's the Alicia, the Anna, just those two A's. I told you I couldn't find that, Amanda. So for the B's. We have Bella, Bermuda, Blue Bandit, and Brooke. How about that? I'll try to hold it still so you can see those. It would be number three, four, five, and six there. Three, four, five, and six. I think I pointed right. Otherwise, it's the other way around. <laughs> okay, and I made Alicia, and here it is. And I made it already. You already saw it right here in this video. Okay. So, Judy is lots and lots and lots of fun. Speaking of uh, movies, um, I, I was editing this, and I was telling you about how Valentine's Day, 1975, when Jerry and I got married, Valentine's Day, he took me to, and it was called the Gaslight Theater, I think is what it was called. Gaslight Dinner Theater, something like that. And we saw... Remember I said, you know who Fred Astaire is? 
<laughs> he wasn't there. <laughs> it was a woman. Did you all figure out who it was? I oh, know you did. Joy didn't even tell us. It's a good thing we know everything. It was Ginger. Ginger Rogers. That's who it was. And she was on the stage. And I can't remember anything now about what the show was, except she was really pretty and she could dance and told us stories, I suppose. <laughs> Anyway, it was Ginger Rogers. I'm sorry I forgot to tell you. Okay, so you know about ABC Challenge. Let me tell you one more thing. I don't know if I got it in here. I think I did. But um, you do the A, you have two weeks. It's over with. She picks the winner. Then you have two weeks to do the Bs. She looks at all the Bs. She picks her favorite. It's over with. Then the next two weeks, you pick a C. In the next two weeks, you pick a D. So it's, how many alphabets? How many letters are in our alphabet? 26? I know I got the weeks wrong in a year. There's 52, not 53. <laughs> but I think there's 26 letters in our alphabet. But I don't think she has garments for all the letters. So we shall see. Um, you saw the paper. I showed it to you. You can read it. If you have questions, you can always ask Judy. She'll get right back with you, I promise. She always gets right back with me. And she even sent me the how do you do the Amanda jacket. So there it is. I don't know where it is in one of her books. But <laughs> she sent me this and so there really is an Amanda. Okay, so I told you about Ginger. I told you about uh, the ABC Club. The ABBT, a lot of you are going to try it. It's an easy, easy, super wonderful, amazing pattern and tons of information comes with it. You will be an expert on how to make a tea fit you. If you will print out that information I showed you and you'll just sit down with a cup of coffee sometime and go through it. Oh yes, you, you don't need me ever again. You probably never needed me to start with, but you just didn't know about that. But that's how I learned it. There's so many different, there's Palmer and Plesh. There's um, Nancy Zeman. There's the ABBT Club. The, the D -E, do it by yourself, do it better yourself. The D-I-B-Y Club. There's that one that teaches you how to fit. There's Threads Magazine that teaches you how to fit. There's Louise Cutting that teaches you how to fit. I mean, it's just, they're everywhere. All of, oh my goodness, don't forget Jennifer Stern. Jennifer Stern teaches you how to fit. Um, so many, there's another lady. Um, she's on Craftsy. She wasn't my favorite. Um, I kind of fell asleep in, in her classes. Uh, but there's a lot of how to fit classes that you, you can buy. And they're always got them on sale for practically nothing on Craftsy.com. So... That's how I learned. I watched all those people, watched all their classes, went and took one with Philly in person. And Philly and I, of course, practiced on each other for years. So if you want to learn to make clothes that fit, no matter how many lumps and bumps and rolls in my, I have a closet full. Did you all see the time I showed all my sure fit designs? And all the dresses I made, all the skirts I made, all the blouses I made. And I hung them up downstairs in my bathroom. And I showed all the different ones I'd made. This was one of them. This is Little Snowman. Look at the fit. Look at the fit. It has a bust dart. It has waist darts. Look. This is Glenda Sparling's Sure Fit Designs. Since I mentioned it, and since so many of you are new, I know, I had lots and lots and lots of people ask me this in the past. What's the difference between Fit Nice and Sure Fit? Fit Nice has two patterns, one top, one pants, and then she has books that show you how to turn it into all the different styles. I love to use the two together. However, they are quite expensive, and you may just want to choose one. But let me show you what Glenda's system looks like. Glenda Sparling owns SureFit Designs. I have made a zillion garments with the dress kit. She has. I don't know if I have all her kits, but I've got the dress kit. I've got the children's kit. I've got the shirt 
kit and I've got the pet kit. Every kit comes with a book. This is the pants kit book. This is the dress kit book. And I think it's an extra. She updates the kits every once in a while and she'll update the books. Sixth edition and sixth edition. So I have two sixth editions. Don't ask me why. You'll just get one book. For some reason, I have two. <laughs> and so the shirt kit comes with a book. The children's kit, does it come with a book? Yes. The children's kit, see? It's not books like um, Judy has, but there's a book in each what she calls a kit. And the kit has the patterns. And the patterns are dot to dot. Pants kit has a book. So let me show you what I mean by dot to dot. You can go over to surefitdesigns.com and you can look at this in great, great, great detail. She hangs these up on the wall and she shows you how to do the dot to dot. She shows you how to measure yourself. So this is what it looks like. So this is the top, the front, and this is the skirt. So it's not just for dresses, it's for skirts. It's for blouses, it's for jackets, it's for vests, it's for pajamas, it's for everything, okay? So Glenda's is a dot to dot. And I love it. If you like pencils and paper and drawing, <laughs> you're only supposed to draw it once and then you're supposed to trace it to reuse it for something else. Well, I'm forever drawing it once and then changing it into something. So I've drawn it a dozen times. Plus my measurements change every other day. Okay, so that's the SureFit Designs. That's where this came from. Dress kit. I used the blouse to draw it from here to the neck. Then I use the back where the skirt is to draw it from here to here. Okay? I hope that makes sense. Judy just has one great big paper and it's no dot to dot. It's just a front, half of a front, half of a back, and a sleeve. And you just draw your size of it and then change it a thousand million ways. And so you find out all of the changes and all the styles from her big books and they are expensive. But, I mean, you get a lot. <laughs> she deserves it, that's a lot of work. All right, so I hope I've told you everything. I told you about Ginger. Gotta tell me that other movie, what movie was that? Didn't movies used to be good? Didn't they used to be so good? We sit in our bed at night watching YouTube videos. But before every video, there's a commercial. Like, I'm sure there's commercials before mine. And I apologize profusely if it's about those horrible, nasty, awful witch movies and, and torture and horror and, oh, how I hate it. And it'll come up and I'll say, look, Jerry, something else our kids are going to watch. Look, Jerry, something else for our kids to watch. Look, Jerry, something else horrible and awful. Isn't there anybody out there who wants to make a happy movie, a fun movie, a family that loves each other, a family where the children honor their mother and their father, like the Waltons, Little House on the Prairie. Well, if you want to go way back, there was Leave it to Beaver and Father Knows Best, but there was another one I was just thinking of where the children loved the parents and the parents loved the children and none of them were drug addicts and none of them were crazy axe murderers and... You know, the kids didn't all run away from home, and the parents weren't shown to be idiots. Especially, they show in these um, weekly, I don't know what they're called, not to be called garbage, but these shows, and they show the parents, the movies, um, or the series, um, the parents are idiots. Parents are absolute idiots. They um, hate each other. Um, they don't get along with their kids. The kids think they're nuts. They don't ever want to be with them. Um, it, it's just absolutely horrible. Horrible. And especially if they're Christians. If they're crazy, kooky, awful Christians. And they make church look like a, like a crazy, unorganized, non-Christian, ungodly, just mess. Not like church is at all. They just totally screw it up. And young people don't know they're watching lies. Young people don't know that's not a family. Young people don't know 
that Jesus is the one who teaches what a family is to be like. He taught it in his word. He is the word. God created us. God knows how a family is supposed to be. And I'm going to lose all my sewing people now. Oh, don't you get off talking about God. We're not interested. Ah, I'm not going to say I'm sorry. <laughs> the world's a mess. America's a mess. And it's because the people in charge are godless. So, if that upsets you and you don't want to listen to me anymore, I feel real, real sad about that because I hope you will like me the way I really am and I don't have to hide what I really think and who my God is. The Andy Griffith Show. Andy Griffith. Mayberry. That's the one I left out. Oh! How wonderful, how wonderful. And in real life, those people weren't like that. Most of them in their real lives, they were a pretty big mess. But the show that they portrayed as being normal was wonderful. Oh, I loved it. Best television show of all time. And I'll tell you someone who agrees with me who died last year. What a shock. What a huge, huge shock. Jeannie Robertson. She and her husband both died last year. But she was still working as if she was as healthy as could be. Still teaching, still doing videos, still going from state to state, doing her stage. Um, she didn't call herself a comedian. I can't think of what she called herself. But anyhow, she died just suddenly. She just died suddenly. Just, and no, they never did say what she died of. But anyway, she always said on the stage, in her talks, that the Andy Griffith Show was the best show ever that has been on TV. All right, just so you know, I'm gonna let you go and end these snippets before I dig a deeper ditch than I'm already in. <laughs> Bye for now.